Raider Nation, what's going on? You're watching the Raiders Report, and today's show is sponsored by Kanzuri. Is anybody out there looking for some height-boosting shoes? If I told you you can get an extra 2.8 inches right now, would you take it? I think you would. And if you would, hey, luckily for you, link's going to be available down in the comments and in the description of today's show. Huge shout-out to Kanzuri for sponsoring the Raiders Report. Coming up here on today's show, we're going to talk about Nate Hobbs. The man entering his third year in the NFL. We're going to go through some offseason news and rumors. And then I'm going to tell y'all what he's going to bring to the table this season and why he is going to have a big time year. To make sure you never miss any news, any videos, hit that subscribe button. And today it is officially July 1st, which means I get to tell you something. You guys are getting live videos, not one day a week, not two days a week, three days days a week and heck if we get breaking news it might even be more so tuesday thursday friday lives here on the raiders report in the month of july got a few more really cool things to tell you but i'm not going to tell you quite yet all right let's get into the latest here on nate hobbs and he has been primarily working during otas and mini camp as the outside number one cornerback However, that might change a little bit the closer and closer it gets to training camp because he could end up playing some slot this season. The best part about Hobbs, and I know I've used this word a hundred times probably in the month of June, <laughs> it's just simply enough, versatility. Hobbs can play outside, he can play inside. It's one of the reasons why this coaching regime does truly love him and they view him as the true number one corner on this roster. And even if he were to play as that slot corner, the Raiders would still view him as the true number one. At the end of the day, all Patrick Graham wants, all McDaniels wants, all Ziegler wants is to have the three best corners out on the field depending on the system that they are going to run. So last season, Hobbs played in 669 snaps. That was seventh most amongst all the Raiders defenders. But he did play in 91% of the snaps in the 11 games he was out there on the field. If you're wondering, I, well, where exactly does that rank? I did put out a video earlier last week, I want to say, around Raiders snap counts. If you haven't checked it out, please go do so. But only three defenders last season played more than 90% of the snaps went on the field. Max Crosby, Deron Harmon, and Nate Hobbs. He's expected to be that top player. But the reason why I felt like I had to make this video is because, let's face it, he is coming off a little bit of a down year. The tackles, not that big of a difference. One less interception, the force fumble. Looking at these numbers, you don't really see the discrepancies from a rookie to the sophomore season. But when you look at his coverage stats, that's where it really is glaring, right? The completion percentage is lower, but when you watch him as a rookie, he was barely giving up any yards. Like, I'm okay if a player gives up a catch if it's only going for three or four yards. And that's what Hobbs was doing in the slot. Where he played in 2021 was the slot. In 2022, he played a little bit more on the outside, giving up 622 yards. It's that quarterback rating, though. You can't consider yourself a top cornerback in the league if your QB rating against you is 120.2. Then you look at the PFF grades, okay? Overall, from 79.1, drops all the way down to 60 point nine run defense grade I don't really not that I don't care about run defense grade but to me I want my corner especially my top corner to cover and he really struggled as a sophomore in the first year in Patrick Graham system being able to cover guys so here's your opportunity to be real with me if you're going to watch this show all I ask is you are always 100% honest because I will always be 100% honest. So what is your confidence level in Nate Hobbs for this upcoming ski season? I want you to scale it from 1 to 10. Well, I'm going to give you my answer in terms of how confident I am. Because not only are we going to cover news and rumors, I'm going to give my analysis on Nate Hobbs as well. But man, uh, really, really big shout out to Kanzuri for sponsoring the Raiders report. Not only are they making me look good, when Alex wears heels, and don't get me wrong, she's a shorty, but when she wears heels, I mean, she's getting almost like eye level to me. So I can rock my Kanzuri's, we go out on date night, and then, yeah, it's nice being six feet tall. So huge shout out to them for sponsoring the Raiders report. Fellas, have you ever wished you were a little bit taller? Maybe you matched on Tinder, but her profile says, must be over six feet. Maybe your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it will make her taller than you. 
Well, if I just described you, I have you covered with today's sponsor, Kanzuri. Kanzuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller without anyone knowing. Look, girls get heels, makeup, and push-up bras. Why can't men get a boost in confidence, too? Kanzuri shoes are not only height-boosting, but also stylish and comfortable. They're not grandpa's Velcro shoes, but fashionable shoes that can receive compliments even without the height increase. The height insoles are integrated into the shoes, making it the ultimate height hack. For a limited time only, our listeners get an extra 15% off your order at Kanzuri.com slash chat. The site is already 30% off, and with our link, you get an extra 50%. That's 45% off your entire order. Support our show and check them out at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com slash chat. Life's short, but you don't have to be. It's time to level up the playing field, guys. Maybe update the dating profile to six feet. Kanzuri is an absolute game changer when it comes to your dating life. So again, anytime we break down a new sponsor here on the show, and I've mentioned these guys a few times, I wanted to show you these shoes. I mean, come on. These are really clean-looking shoes. And again, if you want to get your hands on them, link's going to be available in the comments and in the description of today's show. So let's go back to the confidence level. I feel like if I had some Kanzuri's, it'd be a 10. Confidence level in my height, at least. My confidence, though, level in Hobbs for this upcoming season, I'm going to make it a solid 8. And the reason why I have that confidence in him is because when you're a young player and you come onto the scene, Giggity, and you see how talented he was as a rookie, like, you don't have a player who is that good as a rookie and then totally, totally falls off. I think what it was simply is you looked at a Gus Bradley system, very, very simple for a rookie to be able to pick that up and put him in a situation. Then you go to the Patrick Graham system, which just takes a lot more of knowing exactly what the assignment was. On top of that, he battled some injuries. So 72 tackles last season, no interceptions for pass breakups. I do. I really, truly believe that Nate Hobbs is going to be back in that conversation with Raider Nation as like, all right, this guy can be one of the top corners in the NFL. So coming up here, I'm going to give you my five reasons of why I am very confident in number 39. Let's first go to the biggest reason. He was good last year before the injury. Like, I get how recency bias works. I get that people, as the season goes on and on and on, they forget about early on in the year. But like, Nate Hobbs' as a rookie was a dog. And then before the injury happened, he was also really good. Unfortunately, got injured in that Week 5 game against the Kansas City Chiefs. But prior to that injury, and this is in him as an outside corner, QBR against him, 74.2. Three PBUs, zero touchdowns. Do you remember earlier in the show where I said he had a quarterback rating against him as 120? Well, guess what? It was 74.2 before the injury. If anything, it shows you how bad he was after the injury. Let's go to the next reason here. And I've done shows on Divine Diablo. I've done shows on Tyree Wilson. I have done a lot of different shows on players here that the Raiders are going to be looking towards. And a lot of the things that I mentioned with Diablo is the exact same thing I'm going to say here with Hobbs. It's going to be year two in Patrick Graham's system, and that is going to help. You have heard Trevon Merrick speak about it. You have heard multiple players like Max Crosby, Chandler Jones speak about it. Nate Hobbs this offseason, when asked about it, he said, it's going to be a great ride. The players are excited. They are excited to know when they walk in that room, whether it be practice, whether it be training camp, whether it's going to be on that Sunday, they're going to be a lot more confident that they know exactly what they're going to be able to do. And when you're a player like Hobbs, who is as athletic as he is, not that I don't want the guys to think, but when it's more of just a read and react and not read, think, and then react, that's a big deal. So he's going to be more confident in his assignments this upcoming season. And when the whole team, I say this with a lot of hope, and hopefully the team does play a lot better in year two under Graham, and that's only going to help out Nate Hobbs and the rest of the secondary. Let's go to the next reason here. It's the versatility. If the Raiders want to line him up on the outside, and they can have maybe Duke Shelley out there with them, they're going to mix and match with Brandon face on, all good. They can line him up outside. If they want to run with a cover three, which he did pretty well in college, if they want to go with a three safety look, Hobbs is going to be out there on the field. Hobbs is arguably one of the only players on this Raiders defense that legitimately, you could play him at slot, you could play him at outside, I think you could play him at free safety, strong safety, he's that talented of a player. But what's really going to be interesting is if, let's say the Raiders 
go out and sign Marcus Peters. And by the time I am recording this video, hopefully Peters hasn't signed yet. But hey, if the Raiders sign Peters, if you're a defensive coordinator and Graham, if you're Ziegler and McDaniels, you're like, all right, I can make this work. Why? Because your main corner is as versatile as what Hobbs is. Which then, you kick Hobbs into the outside. You have Duke Shelley, Marcus Peters, which are your press man corners on the outside. And then you have Hobbs working with Tyler Hall. You have him working with Ja'Cory and Bennett. This team adds a lot more depth then if they go out and they make this move. I still got some more reasons coming up here why I am confident in the third year corner out of Illinois. But a friendly reminder, if anybody wants to find me on social media, it's at MitchellRents365. And if you're looking for extra live content, it's over on Locals. RaidersReport.Locals.com. Let's go to the next reason here. Dude's an athletic freak. I can sit up here and I can talk about technique. I can sit up here and talk about year two in the Patrick Graham system, versatility. But when you're an athlete, <laughs> believe it or not, it helps. Uh, that's probably one of the reasons why Chugs and I aren't professional athletes, right? We're not athletic freaks. He is six foot one, 195 pounds. I know. Well, maybe I'm just I'm speaking for Chugs. Chugs is like, eh, I can go pro. So 6'1", 195, but it's a really solid 195. Like. When you look at Hobbs, you could tell this guy is very well put together. And then he's got great leaping ability, really solid acceleration, and an press man, with his, which is what Graham is really going to try to implement this season, that is only going to help him out even more. And then the final reason, which, you know, I may, I may almost make the argument this might be one of the biggest ones, he's motivated. Really, really motivated to prove the doubters wrong. And I got told this by a person very close to Hobbs, and it was simple, right? Think about anything that you do. If you hear somebody chirping, right, and you're like, oh man, this freaking guy back here, you're going to want to try to prove those people wrong. And I've sat up here on this show, and I said, Hobbs needs to be better. I guarantee you, if Nate was sitting up here, he would say the exact same thing. I need to be better. So, had somebody tell me, all right, Hobbs wants to prove all the doubters wrong, and essentially what he told me was, you got to go back and look at the year Hobbs had from a rookie, and then you look at a certain point. Hobbs was arrested January 3rd, 2022, okay? He was asleep inside of his vehicle on the exit ramp. His blood alcohol level was 0.07. In Las Vegas, DUI is 0.08. The reason why that that's a big-time story was, remember, a few months before that, the Henry Rugg situation happened. So it was like, damn, Hobbs, like, you're having a hell of a year, but what are you doing? Then, yes, he started the season great, but a lot of times, what do fans hold on to? They hold on to how you finish the year. So it's finish the year bad as a rookie, finish the year bad as a sophomore. For that reason, he's got a chip on his shoulder. And I'll tell you what, I love when my players have chips on their shoulders. Keep on dusting them off. So before I end today's show, I am in my hometown, Danville, Pennsylvania. Shout out to the 570 I got to go home, visit the fam. Haven't seen the fam in a very long time. I haven't seen my mom in like 20 months. So being able to go home is great. All I want to know is this. Where is your hometown? Mine's in Danville, PA. And if anybody lives near the 570, hey, don't be afraid. Hit me up. Maybe we can go grab a beer or two. All right, so here again, one more time, why I'm confident in Hobbs. Good last year before the injury. Keep an eye on him. Patrick Graham system in year two. I like it. Hobbs, great versatility, athletic freak, and he's motivated. All of those reasons are why Nate Hobbs is going to have one hell of a year in 2023.